This video is sponsored by Sketchfab. Stick around to see how you can get high quality 3D models for free. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we're looking at Bugapi Modifier Free Add-on. Now this add-on is something that you should get. I mean, even if you're not going to use it, just simply grab it and try it. Actually, it's extremely impressive to see the kind of things that you can work with and things that you can do with this. So with that said, we're going to dive directly into Blender and take a look at how this one actually works. So once you download the add-on, all you need to do is go to Edit, go over to Preference and install it. And once you install this, Unlike any other add-on that you've actually worked with before, this you don't need to press N on your keyboard. All you need to do is start up with a hotkey since it's a Pi menu tool and you can start working with it. And to get started, once we have an object within our viewport selected, we can tap J on the keyboard and you can notice all of the stuff you can do with the bag of Pi. So first off, we'll start off by taking a look at Boolean. So once you hit the J key and you go over or you simply click on six, you can go over to Boolean and you can start doing some pretty cool stuff. So one of the things is this. So let's say you want to create or you want to Boolean things. So we're just simply going to just click and drag, you know, it doesn't really matter right now. So I'm also going to go ahead and do the very same thing here. So click and drag all the way out and you can see that. And I'll also go ahead and do the same thing right over here. So let's click drag all the way out and you can actually see this thing in action. Now in several cases you might also see that probably you're trying to boolean the satin part and that part didn't boolean properly. Then what can you do? What you can do is simple. Select the object, tap L on your keyboard, make sure you have all of that selected. Select the scale tool and scale through this and of course you'd also notice that we'll have some boolean operation happening. And once you're done with that simply jump over to your object mode and you notice that you have a very clean looking boolean object. Now you can also boolean by simply using different models. So let's go ahead and get rid of this one and let's simply delete that. So with this here, if we tap J on the keyboard as well, go over to boolean, we can choose to change this to something else. So let's say we want to use a cylinder to do that boolean right now. If we, you know, simply hold down shift and click and drag, we can also boolean like so. We can also do the same thing like this and then you can go in and boolean this bad boy however you choose now boolean is just one of the things that you can do with it and once you're done next thing you need to do is go over to your modifier and simply click on accept and that will be done and these are the ones you can go in and accept them if you want to simply select them and hit the delete key and get rid of them and you have a very clean mesh that you can work with so like i was saying boolean is just one of the things that you can do with this there's also a whole lot of things that you can so in this case let's believe that we have a simple plane like this and you probably want to create things like walls you want to create like probably you're into architecture right and you want to create walls you want to do some very crazy stuff yes you can so if you go over to your edit node and you right click and simply dissolve the vertices just to make sure that you have one let's take a look at this from the z point of view and if we tap e on the keyboard we can extrude this i'm just going to make some very random extrusion all right don't judge me so i'm just going to make some very random extrusions like this probably get one to be this way, get one to be about the point like so. And finally, I'm just gonna go in and lock this one right there. So once we have something like this, we can also jump out to our object view. And with this object selected, if we tap J on the keyboard and switch to wall, what do you get? All right, so you get some cool walls and you can play with the heights depending on what you wanna do. And you can also play with the depth, okay? And uh, I think maybe we can get something as cool as that. And you can also offset this however you want so we can offset that and get some very cool results and we can also get something like this you can also choose to apply or add windows to your scene so let's say we would like to add some windows if we would like to add windows to this simply select the object tap j on the keyboard go over to where you have windows click and drag to define your window like right now i want some windows like this and then maybe we might want a, a smaller window somewhere like here so we can also grab a small window somewhere like here. Just simply place that. And maybe we might also want to get another window, maybe as big as the other one. Okay, like we did the last time. And yeah, so we have something like that. So once you're done, jump back to your object view and you've got yourself a couple of windows. And this is awesome. Okay, so this is really, really cool. Now for a tool that is just totally free, there's just a lot of things that you can do with it. So we can also go in and scale this all the way up, you know, grab that as it is. And then if we tap J one more time on the keyboard, you can see there's a whole lot of things that you can also accomplish with this. So I haven't actually tried the displace. I kind of got a couple of errors while working with it, 
but then I did try the scatter and this handles scattering very well and for this we're going to go ahead and import some models that we got from Sketchfab. So with the models here, let's actually make sure that they don't have any form of transform. All right, so with the models here, what we can do is we can have them selected, go all the way to object, go all the way to where we have a supply and apply all transform. So what happens once you hit the apply all transforms, let me show you guys, is if you already have any form of transformation, like right now you notice that the scale of this object is 0.01 and uh, we also have that all the way down and we have this at this location. What we can do is we'll go over to object, go all the way down to where we have as apply, we can apply all transforms and this would apply all the transforms. So we can have that there. And the next thing which we can do is if we would like to scatter this particular one on this surface, we can have this selected and then select the surface, tap J on the keyboard and hit on the word scatter. And once you do that, you would notice that it scatters around and then you can go in and play with how much density you would like to get and what is the minimum and maximum scale that you might want to get. So in this case, for the minimums or for the maximum scale, we can set this to 0.1 and then for the minimum scale, we can set it to 0.01 and press the enter key. And at this point, we can now go in and increase the density as much as we want. Let's set this all the way to 800 and see what we can get. That looks a bit small. Let's add an additional zero to this and see what we can get. And for the distances, we can also proceed to just reduce that all the way down. So with that there, you now notice that we have a huge, huge pile, all right? You'll notice that we have a huge pile of grass around the building. And just in case you're worried about it and you like to tweak it, because this is running on the geometry node, you can always go over to the modifier panel. So if you go over to the modifier panel, you can set the distance to 0.1, for example, and get something like that, or 0.01 to actually get even more grass in there. So with this, you can start scattering stuff and start creating some amazing scenes and uh, start doing some very, very lovely things with this. And for those considering scattering more than one thing, of course you can. So what you can do is you can also proceed, select the two assets that you'd like to scatter, select the surface, tap J on your keyboard and hit the scatter button and that way you will be able to scatter these things. The minimum distance can also be changed. So at this point, we can also go ahead and change this back to 0.1, for example, and you can see this and you can also proceed to do some very interesting things with it. So if you're also thinking about changing the rotation, of course you can. So you can also change the rotation of these things and you can also randomize their positions and also play with the aligning to normals just to get these things to work. Another thing which is very possible with this tool is just in case you're also thinking about painting. So we've already taken a look at how you can scatter things. What about if you like to organize these things? Maybe you would like to scatter this by a given pattern. You would like to paint some areas and you know control how the scattering works. So for that one, you need a plane or you need a surface with several vertices or with a good subdivision. So right now what we need to do is go over to the modifier section and then we would add a subdivision surface. So within the subdivision surface, we can crank this one all the way to six and set this to simple. And once we have this at simple, what we can do now is we can apply this and then select the object which you like to scatter, select the surface, tap J on the keyboard and switch to scatter paint. So once you have this ready, you can now proceed to start making the painting and you would notice one thing, that once you're painting this, because this makes use of the vertex painting, you would notice that as you paint, these things rarely pop up. So how can you actually make them pop up more? So like what we've talked about before, the distance minimum is very responsible for that. So we can set this to 0.01 and press the enter key and also increase the density of what we'd like to see. So let's increase that density reduce the scale down and also reduce this other one. So I'm just going to set this one to 0.01 and uh, set this one, actually set this to 0.1 and then set this to 0.01 and let that be. So once we have that ready, I can increase this. All right, so let's go ahead and increase that. And we can also proceed to increase this or let's reduce that just about the point like so. And so it is. So now we can proceed to make that painting and you would notice that they just simply pop up as we paint. So depending on what you like to work with, this is definitely going to come in very, very, very handy. So you can increase these things as much as you want. So in this case, we can actually go ahead and make that about 2000 and you can see how crazy that is. And once you're done with it, you can go and switch over to your object mode 
and start creating some beautiful stuff this isn't the only thing that you can actually do with this add-on you can also do some more stuff so let's actually just go in and set this all the way to 0.1 so that we don't throttle the pc while working on this and we'll proceed to add some cubes all right so let's take a look at this other one so right here i'm just going to go in and scale this one down all right and i'm also going to go ahead and make another copy and i will proceed to bevel this one in let's roll that bevel a bit and keep it right there scale it down a bit and jump all the way out good so with this here what we'd like to take a look at is arrays so this also offers some set of tools like arraying and uh, you might want to check that as well so if we tap j on the keyboard you notice that we have array right here so if we click on the array tool you'll see what the array tool looks like so we can choose to have a number of counts all right you can see that i'm just going to go ahead and bring this one all the way down and you can choose the different types of arrays that you might want to get so if you like to have arrays based on line you can get that if you like to have arrays based on grid or maybe you like to have arrays based of circles you can also get this so we can also go in and increase the radius and also increase the count so this way you have all of the flexibilities of things that you might want to create by simply using the arrays so we can also crank this one all the way down and also reduce the number of counts that we have and in terms of skill you can also reduce the skill and you can play with the maximum and the minimum skill that you like to work with and i'm also going to go ahead and increase this count like so so it's quite impressive to see that this add-on is actually free and you can grab it right now and start making some amazing and beautiful designs with it so this is more like it for those who like to play with this probably you like to take a look at it see how it works and you might want to actually uh, tweak it to your liking right now the scatters the arrays and also the scatter paints they all work with the geometry node and you can take advantage of these things and start creating some beautiful masterpiece and for those who are thinking about getting some professional looking add-ons we've also seen a couple of them before so previously we did talk about scatter and scatter is a very cool add-on that you can work with and the scatter 5 is actually within its open beta as well so in case you like to grab this you can actually go over to the link which is going to be in the description and check it out and for those who are also looking for things like plants you're looking for trees there is also some very cool ones as well so we've also talked about the folks at botanic creating some very beautiful tools that you might want to check out and right now they actually have a coupon so just in case you're thinking about grabbing their stuff and the botanic add-on actually supports things like wind animation if you're into working with trees and you like to also scatter stuff they also have a very good scattering tool set as well which you can also take advantage of and we've also talked about vegetation having some very cool update as well and it's also interesting to see that all of these tools they have coupons and percentage off so just in case you're thinking about checking on these things i'm going to put these links as well in the description so you can do well to check these things out and that's about it bugger pie is right here and for those who are into scattering stuff or probably you're into creating booleans you're into architectural things you might consider taking a look at this and playing with it and of course for those who are looking for amazing models that you can use or maybe you're thinking about trying out with the model that we've just used the white flower is right here on sketchfab so you can proceed to grab it and it's very interesting to see that sketchfab has a whole lot of things that you can grab for free and with that said they actually have a summer sale that is going on right now and you can get any of the models that you want for 30 percent by simply using hello summer within your checkout and that's about it i'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and until i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks Things like this. Peace.